Hi, I'm Winnie Kabinti and welcome to my YouTube channel, Voice It. Corruption is arguably the greatest challenge to Kenya's social economic development. Sadly, from the look of things, it seems to be getting worse by day. Corruption has become so rampant in Kenya that Wanainchi have almost learned to live with it. As um, Jeffrey Gentleman once captured in a previous article that was published in the New York Times, Kenyans right now have even acquired an anti-corruption plea. Just steal a little. Please just steal a little. Ibeni tu atakama ni kidogo. But what I'm saying today is, no, our taxes should not be looted, even that little, because the impact of even that little loot, we will feel it from generations to generations. Um, I've come to realize that most of us, and especially the common mana inchi, uh, either just out of ignorance or just sheer perception, because it's, it's become more of a culture of accept and move on, we do not really realize the impact of corruption. The local media has not helped much either in highlighting some of these effects or other consequences and just telling us what corruption does to us. Say for the occasional news reports that uh, 791 million has been looted in NYS, another um, X billions in Eurobond and what have you, and then they bring in a couple of panelists to react to the issue. And in the typical Kenyan fashion, we move on. So today, I want to change that narrative. I want to highlight just three ways, just three, in which corruption affects you, with the hope that we are going to start having this conversation and we change our approach, because it starts with you, with me, in our own little ways, we change this narrative and our approach to the war on graft. So here's one of the ways in which corruption affects you. And the first thing is that it messes up the quality of services we receive. As a citizen, as a taxpayer, you are entitled to some basic services from the government. And one of these services is healthcare, education, you know, and good infrastructure. So when corruption is so rampant, the quality of our healthcare, the quality of our education is curtailed. And that's why you see uh, some of these challenges we see in public hospitals where you go there as a patient, there's no doctor to attend to you. You have to wait on the queue, even if you're dying, to even get an admission or to even get a, you know, the stretchers. We saw this in that sad story of the hit and run victim. Uh, his name was Alex Madaga that hit and run victim who was forced to contain in an ambulance for 18 good hours just because he couldn't get access to, he couldn't get an ICU bed. It was a sad story and sadly the guy ended up dying, you know? So that is what happens when you can't access healthcare. Look at our Look at our, um, our public hospitals. There are no services. There are hospitals where uh, patients are even uh, forced to share beds. Some don't even have, uh, doctors don't even have the requisite instruments and gears that they need to attend to patients. And it is sad. Basic things like even gloves, you know? And so even access, like right now, you can't compare the quality of um, public health care and what you get in the private sector and that's why most people are drifting at least those ones who can afford who are just a few what about that common money inchi who cannot afford to go to a private hospital what happens to them the other area that is affected by corruption is the quality of education in the country and education is so crucial to our economic and social growth because of corruption Institutions are not functioning as they should. And we, the, the, there's even a crop of other institutions that are coming in and there's no proper regulation to oversee exactly the quality of education, the quality of facilities of these institutions. And so at the end of the day, these institutions end up producing half-baked graduates. People who do not uh, possess the requisite skills for the job market. We have seen several reports that have actually indicated 
that a uh, majority of Kenyan graduates, or rather, most of our universities are churning out half-baked graduates who do not uh, possess the requisite practical skills to compete in today's job market. And so that, that is as far as uh, education goes. The second point when it comes to the impact of corruption is that it curtails the rule of law. You know, the judiciary is the custodian of our constitution. It's that place where we all know when everything else fails, when parliament fails, when you, when you get an injustice in your community or whatever it is, it is the last place where, you know, sanity will prevail and they will go and get justice. So when corruption thrives, it makes it difficult for the rule of law to be executed. Because uh, investigations will be bungled. And that, 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 that one is, uh, is more from the police aspect because it's the department that is charged with investigations. And we've even seen those cases where uh, especially the corruption cases where um, the different government agencies are trading blame on each other. The judiciary uh, lets go of people and they say that uh, they can only prosecute people based on the evidence. And it's only right that way. But then where were these investigations bungled? They were bungled right from the investigations. So when corruption thrives, it becomes difficult to get justice. And that is not something we want, because when the rule of law, when people cannot bank on the rule of law, that ushers in a state of lawlessness, because people will feel as though I need to deal with this thing by myself. I will not get justice, you know, if I go to the courts. So let me move to my third point. I, I believe that one is clear. Let me move to my uh, third point on how corruption affects you. And this is where we even feel it mostly. And this is the economic impact of corruption. The impact of corruption on our economy is believed to be the most significant. As I mentioned earlier, uh, public money is supposed to be used by the government to provide services and fund development projects. Now, when a huge chunk of that is looted, or there's low revenue collection because of tax evasion, which has been orchestrated by, or rather facilitated by corruption, it leaves the government in a financial fix. And when the government is in a financial fix, and there's a budget to be funded, two things are likely to happen. One, the government resorts to borrowing, and two, the government increases our taxes, you know, to raise more money. Uh, in the recently unveiled budget, we can see these two issues coming into play. They've increased our taxes, even to simple things as our mobile money transactions. The, the tax for mobile money used to be 10%, now it's 12%. To put it into perspective, because this is, like I said earlier, I am going to break it down for you in a way that is relatable. Um, for every 100 bob you spend on M-Pesa, on mobile money rather, <laughs> uh, the government gets 12 shillings in tax. The other aspect is on borrowing. The government can borrow in two ways. It can borrow domestic or it can borrow externally. When the government borrows internally, at some point they are competing. You know, the government is competing with Wananchi. And so uh, it ends up raising the interest rates uh, at the banks. And so uh, for the common person to access credits, it becomes a bit difficult because of the high interest that you people will have to pay. The, can, the second aspect, when the government borrows so much externally, is that it increases our public debt. Do you even know how much our public debt is right now? Let me give you the figures. In January, Treasury CS Henry Rotich tabled a report in Parliament revealing that public debt was ballooning up from shillings 435 billion two years ago to 658 billion in the current financial year. Rotich also revealed that the public debt 
will hit a record shilling 1 trillion in the current financial year. To set those figures in perspective, Treasury will now spend shillings 54 in every 100 bobby traders in taxes just to service the public debt. Don't forget that our public wage bill is another thing altogether. So how much really is left for development? The other impact of corruption on the economy is that it shrinks investment in the country and especially foreign investment because the cost of doing business becomes very high because there's no efficiency in acquiring things such as licenses, permits and the taxes are hefty. So there you have it guys. Those are the three main ways in which corruption affects you majorly. And remember Voice It is all about social change. And so I want to pose a challenge to each one of us, you know, because we are part of this process, because corruption in Kenya has become more of a culture. It's our way of life. So refuse to be part of that process, no matter how little the issue is. Even if it's that traffic offense and you think you have to give that hope that 100 or 500 bob to get away with it, there's a legal process to follow. And sometimes it's not even that difficult, but because we are used to, you know, dishing out something to get away with it, you're part of the problem. So let's start speaking about this issue. If you walk into that government office and you're not served or rather given the service that you've gone to seek because someone wants something so that they can facilitate that process, voice it. If you're not bold enough to talk about it in that premises, please just come comment in the video section below or just email us. The details are just there. Email me and we will voice these issues and we will follow up and speak about them, provoke these people and understand why these things are happening. It starts with all of us. So please subscribe, join this team and get talking. Get talking. That's the most important thing.